Welcome to Red Recaps. We're going to discuss the 2018 action adventure movie Rampage today, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun, so sit back and take it all in. With that out of the way, let's get started. In 1993, a new technology called CRISPR was developed, and it was used right away to make dangerous experiments. CRISPR has been used to change a lab rat, which has now killed the whole crew on a space station. Dr. Carrie Atkins was the only one to make it out alive, and now she's asking for help from Energine's top people, the ones who made the CRISPR mutagen. The CEO of Energine, Claire Wyden, tells Carrie to return the mutagen samples. Carrie goes back to get the samples, but the rat monster is after her. She makes it to the escape pod, but she is released just as the station is engulfed in flames, and the rat was still inside it. However, the pod is damaged and rips open, depressurizes and explodes, which ultimately results in Carrie's death. The samples themselves are launched into the air and distributed across the entire country. Davis, a primatologist, shows employees Nelson, Connor, and Amy a cage housing an ape at an animal shelter in San Diego. They come across Pavo, an ape who was acting a little angry at Davis, but Davis is able to calm him down softly. Right at that moment, a gorilla with albinism, whose name is George, charges in. Connor becomes irritated as a result of Pavo's reaction, and he pursues Connor until George knocks him out of the way. Pavo is terrified of George until Davis calms his nerves with a few words. After some time has passed, Nelson approaches Davis and asks him why he finds himself drawn to animals rather than people. Davis claims that there is a natural bond between him and the animals. At some point during the night, the mutagen samples start arriving. One of them crashes into George's enclosure, another into the woods near a pack of wolves, and the third into a river in Florida. In the meantime, a lone wolf is sprayed with the gas as a crocodile consumes the entire sample, and George is also hit by the spray. The following morning, Davis receives a phone call to check on George and see how he is doing. They discover George inside the enclosure with a dead grizzly bear when they get there. Davis can tell that George was the one who was attacked by the bear first, since he has a scratch on his chest from where the creature scratched him. The moment George stands up and walks over to Davis, it turns out that he is around 9 feet tall. Claire's partner is furious that the samples were destroyed, but Claire is unconcerned about it because she recently discovered the location of the samples, which would earn her a significant amount of money. George is put in prison when they find out something is wrong. Davis asks his co-workers if any of them can find an answer to the sample bottle with him. Kate, a geneticist, shows up and says the sample bottle belongs to her. This makes Davis ask her what's inside. At first, she didn't want to talk about the composition of the content, but in the end, she did. She is taken to see George, where she says that George's hunger is due to his rapid growth which was caused by the mutagen samples. This angers George, so he breaks out of his prison and terrorizes everyone who comes to the sanctuary while running amok there. Davis is able to corner him just as the police arrive. Before he can calm George down, a helicopter flies overhead and starts shooting darts at him until he passes out. Burke leads the military team into the Wyoming forest to get a sample of the mutagen. Burke gets in touch with the Widens and tells them that the container is empty. As the group moves deeper into the forest, they find dead wolves all over the ground and a huge paw print in the dirt. Then the modified wolf, named Ralph, finds them and attacks them as he runs through the forest. The squad shoots at him, but it doesn't hurt because Ralph picks them off one by one until only Burke is left. He tells the helicopter to shoot at Ralph, but the wolf jumps out of the trees and crashes it into the lake. Ralph catches Burke, and he gets eaten. Harvey Russell, who works for the government, goes to the refuge to put George on a plane and hide him from the public. Davis and Kate are also interrogated. 
Russell thinks they have everything under control, but Davis thinks it's suicidal to put George on the plane. Russell reveals, after looking at Davis and Kate's records, that Kate was fired from Energine for trying to steal research from the labs. She spent 13 months in prison for this. Davis realizes that she lied and that, because of this, she can't help George. After Claire finds out what the wolf did, she turns on a radio frequency that calls the mutant animals. Ralph and Lizzie, the crocodile, make their ways to Energine, which is in Chicago. Even though George is on medicine, he hears the frequency and starts to wake up. In a fit of anger, he breaks down the cage and starts to create havoc. When Davis steps in, George is about to kill Russell, but he only manages to knock Russell out. The plane's turbine stops working, and it starts to fall. As the plane crashes to the ground, Davis gives himself, Kate and Russell parachutes, and they jump out of the plane. When the three get there, they find out that George survived the crash and is headed to the city. Russell wakes up and tells Davis how much he appreciates him saving his life. He then offers to help him and Kate. At Energine's lab, the FBI gets in and does a thorough search. Based on what he knows about her, Davis makes it clear that he doesn't trust Kate. She asks him why animals are more important to him than people. Davis then talks about how he met George. The poachers had taken his mother, so young George hid under the poacher's truck out of fear. Davis and his group found him, and the poachers were killed in the same way that they had killed the gorillas. Kate also reveals that her brother was diagnosed with cancer while she was working for Energine, and she hoped that CRISPR could cure him, until she found out that Claire was making dangerous weapons with CRISPR. Kate tried to run away with it, but she was caught and put in jail. As Davis, Kate, and Russell head to Chicago, they meet up with a military team that is keeping an eye on George and Ralph. They see that the animals have been called to the city and that they need to find a way to keep them under control. So Russell helps Davis and Kate steal a helicopter and get into the city because they may be the only ones who can stop the madness. When George, Ralph, and Lizzie arrive in town, the monsters fight each other, causing chaos. Most of the city is in ruins by the time David and Kate get there. The two then run to Energine to find a cure because they know they can't stop them on their own. Davis is able to land the helicopter in the middle of all the chaos and they run into the building. They find the lab that has the antidote, but the Widens get there first and Brett takes them away. The two are informed by Claire that the antidote will not return the animals to their original size. Rather, it will simply lower the animal's heightened aggression. Before she leaves with Kate, she grabs the revolver and shoots Davis in the abdomen. The Widens attempt to board their own helicopter in order to escape with Kate and their chemicals. However, the monsters start ascending the tower. After climbing to the peak, George destroys the helicopter, which causes Brett to run away. It appears that Kate's time has arrived, but an injured Davis shows up on the scene. Almost immediately, he diverts George's attention for a sufficient amount of time for Kate to retrieve a bottle of antidote and place it in Claire's bag. After securing the antidote, Kate hits Claire and shoves her into George's path, which compels George to grab her and consume both her and the antidote. In the meantime, Brett is on his way out of the premises when he comes face to face with Russell, who had only moments ago entered the establishment. Russell informs him that if he wants to be free, he should turn over the laptop that contains his research. Brett takes the offer with delight and dashes out the door. Unfortunately, he was cut down and murdered by a stray piece of falling debris. Ralph and Lizzie also ascend to the top of the mountain, while Davis and Kate wait for the treatment to take effect. Davis and Kate flee in the direction of the Widen's helicopter to escape the falling debris and widespread disaster. However, the tower falls apart and crashes to the ground before the helicopter can take off. Despite this, Davis and Kate are both able to make it through and George has emerged from the ashes to become his former self. On the other hand, Ralph and Lizzie are still wreaking havoc, so Davis and George have concluded that it's time to put a stop to it. To put an end to all of the commotions, the military intends to take fatal action. However, this would mean that George would be caught in the crossfire. Hence, 
Kate rushes to Russell in an effort to delay the impending attack in some way. While all this is going on, George is fighting against Ralph and Lizzie. Ralph is tossed about by him, but the wolf can fly and shoot quills. And Lizzie's skin is so tough that it is almost impossible to damage it. As a result, to assist George, Davis is successful in tricking Ralph into gliding toward him. However, when Davis moves, he causes Ralph to fly into the path that Lizzie is traveling in. Ralph is grabbed by the throat and proceeds to bite off his head before swallowing it. George makes an attempt to strike Lizzie, but she is much stronger than he is, and she instead impales him by throwing him against a pole. Davis, seeing that George is in danger, once again springs into action. He tosses a grenade belt at Lizzie's neck and tries to knock her down with the chopper's gun, but it just scrapes her. Lizzie pursues Davis and gets quite near to him before George leaps into the air with the pole, slams it into Lizzie's eye, and then runs it through her brain, therefore putting an end to Lizzie's life. After observing everything that has taken place, the colonel in charge of the military operations orders an end to the strike. It would appear that George's injury has rendered him helpless, and he appears to have died. Everyone appears to be heartbroken, but all of a sudden, George moves, and it turns out that he was just teasing George the whole time. Everyone heaves a sigh of relief, and the heroes start to depart the city, although it is unknown where George will make his new home. Do you have a soft spot in your heart for animals, or do you mistreat them? Leave a comment down below and let us know what you think about the movie. As always, thanks for watching Red Recaps.